The Dark Cosmos. Stay cosmic. Hey, Lee Chase. Welcome to the Daedalus team. You sure were the most difficult one to find, young lady, but now that you're here, we can get started. Please, take a seat. Let it be known, I am not here voluntarily. My name is Haley Chase, and a terrible tragedy, an accidental crime, inspired me to flee planet Earth and hide on the outskirts of the American settlement on the moon. Apparently, I didn't hide well enough. Tonight, a group of soldiers in nondescript black uniforms broke into my hideout, kidnapped me, and dropped me here, a warehouse even further away from the colonies built on the moon. Inside, in a meeting room, I met a couple of dozen people gathered, listening to this eerily animated man at the front of the room. I'll try to be brief, he says. My name is Captain Jack Thomason, and I'm in charge of this team. All of you are here because you're brilliant. You all excel at your jobs. Now, the American government is in need of your services. As you know, spaceships are extremely expensive, slow, and oftentimes unreliable. Most of us and the materials to build our growing settlements were brought to the moon via teleportation. I know for a fact you're all familiar with the system that makes that possible, but there's a lot of competition. <laughs> our country is leading the race, but we want more than that. We're aiming for something higher. The US government wants all of you to build an improved teleportation device that will allow us to start a colony on a bigger and better planet ahead of our competition. Although that speech should have been impactful, it gets completely overshadowed by the ridiculous laughter coming from the only other man sitting in the last row with me. <laughs> will you please just fucking stop pretending this is the government? You're a goddamn terrorist! Who do you work for? What do you want us for? Mr. Olivers, I recommend showing a little bit of respect. Hey, fuck your respect! The man close to me yells and jumps to his feet. Are you even human? I've seen androids more convincing than you. Is that it? You want our human bodies to create your evil androids? Shut the fuck up! Jack yells and punches the table at his side. Hard enough that I'm sure it'll leave a dent. I'm convinced I'm surrounded by crazy and, even worse, dangerous people. Are you even listening to yourself? Henry Olivers, the most brilliant physicist on Earth, and yet you've lost everything to your hubris, your gambling, your baseless conspiracy theories against your peers and your fucking government. Can you shut up and do your job for once? Either you work with us or you die on the streets. Understood? It works. Henry rolls his eyes, but sits back down. I have no idea if I should expect Jack Thomason to become harsher or more careful from now on. <laughs> That's your head physicist, ladies and gentlemen. He says, pacing the stage, trying to calm down. Leading the process of building the physical structure for our teleportation device is Roger. Just Roger, Captain. Says a man with a deep voice, sitting on the front row of our group. Are we going to have any issues with you? Do you want issues with me, Thomason? Please, don't. Jack replies, bringing a hand to his face to rub his temples. If only we could all follow the example of our head astrophysicist. We have a prodigy in our midst. Miss Jackie Oakley! Jack starts clapping and a few of the workers follow his lead. But suddenly, I can't focus on anything but the girl on the front row standing up. I barely notice her, because she's standing up barely taller than the men sitting down. Are you serious? I gasp. Oh, she's very capable. An actual genius. Henry murmurs close to me, but I'm too enraged. I thought it was cruel that I was losing my life to be here. But that's a baby. Did you kidnap a child? I ask, loud enough to reach the front. What's that? I said, did you fucking kidnap a child? I can't hold back. I thought I was going to die when I got kidnapped. So now my self-preservation instincts are null. 
Miss Chase, I'll have you know that Miss Oakley's parents authorized her employment in exchange for a generous salary, and- Is this a joke? I stand up and exclaim. Is this even legal? Henry is right. Your creepy soldiers aren't wearing official uniforms and there's not even a flag on sight. Why should we believe this is the US government? You're spewing insults and kidnapping people and- And you're a mass murderer, aren't you? <gasps> I flinch when I hear everyone present gasping at his words. I'm not. I protest, albeit weakly. Did you, or did you not, hack into the NASA system to illegally send thousands of people on a spaceship that ended up exploding and killing every single person on board? There it is. The thing that's been eating me alive for months. The thousands of souls that have been haunting me. The crime that they're going to use against me to get me to do anything they want. I didn't, I say, much quietly. But even when I try to explain, I know that, technically, it's true. NASA is slowly evacuating the country, but only people that can afford it. I was trying to help. They blew up the spaceship, not me! Goddamn Jack Thomason has the smartest reaction possible. He stays quiet. He doesn't even fight me. He makes it clear that my argument is not worth it. Plus, as if I could possibly forget, reminds me that if I were to leave this room, they could easily send me to jail, or worse, back to Earth. To the hands of the people whose loved ones I put in a suicidal spaceship. I have no option but to shut my mouth and sit back down. Jack clears his throat and speaks to the group again. <clears throat> now that these lovely introductions are out of the way, it's time to get to work. We've prepared sleeping quarters for all of you. Work begins tomorrow. We expect outstanding results and as soon as possible. After the meeting is over, we are allowed to sleep for the rest of the night. Does it even matter if it's the government or not? Some people here just want to get paid. But for some of us, for me, this is about either I work on this, or I can expect a life sentence, or worse, immediate death. All things considered, the project is ambitious, intriguing, and I don't mind the idea of having a new challenge to face. The project starts with a full power. Under Roger's direction, the team brings in large containers with the materials for the construction of the structure that will hold up the teleportation portal. The base of the structure is made of highly specific reinforced steel. By now, humanity has reliable resources that endure teleportation through space, and the machine itself is made out of it. Henry Olivers and Jackie Oakley have set up camp at a designated corner, where I will soon join them. They made an odd pair, the frantic, long-haired, bearded old man, and the meticulous, orderly little girl. He's in charge of the logistics of the teleportation process. She's set to make the calculations that will make us land at an accurate spot on a planet, previously selected by our superiors, out of a handful of options, publicly known as habitable for humanity. And me? I'm connecting all of them. I'm in charge of the computer, the head of the machine. Captain Jack Thomason meets me in his makeshift office at the center of the meeting room. And I ask him the obvious. Surely the US government has access to the code, blueprints, and the details of the whole mechanism of other portals they have previously built, right? You can provide us with that much. Jack smiles in a way I'm sure he thinks is charming, and tells me, Surely an interplanetary hacker like yourself could find a way to provide those contents by yourself. I reply, That's just going to slow us down. Of course I can. If you aren't the government, if you don't have access to these files, just say it and... I'm too busy scoffing and rolling my eyes to notice when he reaches into the pocket of his nondescript uniform and pulls out a small drive. I barely have time to catch it when he throws it before it hits me in the face. Don't you dare doubt me again, Chase! He snaps and claps his hand on the desk in front of him. The abrupt change in mood feels more dangerous than if he were angry all the time. Of course, we got you the files. Do you seriously think that's all we need? Steal the data from the teleportation devices of the other governments. We need all the advantage we can get. Now get to work, Haley. We're on a tight schedule. 
Jack is quite right on that last statement. Work on the Daedalus experiment is incredibly fast-paced. Jackie is all too happy to talk to me about her progress on the astrophysics part of the project. I'm honoured and nervous to have her trust. Her parents pretty much sold her to this job. The experiment could have been called Daedalus for its complexity and difficulty, but really, it's because that's the name of the planet we chose to build a new settlement in. I think that's why they picked me for it. What do you mean? I ask her. Well, I was part of the team that discovered this planet. I was eight years old, and people still thought I was just a cute scam or something. I've been proving myself a Daedalus since the start. We found it together, but I was the first one to suggest it's habitable. My calculations didn't fail, and look at us now. Habitable. The word sounds so strange to me. So, you're sure it's good enough? As safe as the moon? I wonder. She smiles shyly and replies, It's reliable as planet Earth. Breathable atmosphere, its gravity is ideal, the temperatures are optimal, it's a perfect match. I can make sure we'll appear on safe land, close enough to a source of water in the northern hemisphere, which is experiencing its best season right now. Unfortunately, the rest of the team isn't doing quite so well. A fight breaks out between Roger and Henry that claims everyone's attention. What on earth is going on here? Jack asks, effortlessly wearing his mask of a concerned leader. Say that again! Roger spits at Henry's face, completely ignoring everyone else trying to mitigate the argument. I don't trust you! I don't trust your work! Henry exclaims, matching his foul mood. If there's anything else he was going to add, it gets cut off when Roger grabs him by the neck of his frayed and patched up coat and lifts him a couple inches off the floor. We all gasp and curse and move closer to try and stop them, but not too close as to catch a stray punch. Jack has to intervene. Can we please calm down for a second? Jack says, and when he gets ignored, he grows louder. Uh, forget politeness. Behave! Both of you! I want explanations now. It's an order! Roger lets go of Henry suddenly, making the older man stumble and fall to the ground. Captain, your crazy scientist expects me to build two of these huge, expensive, complex, and time-consuming structures just for his stupid games! Roger explains. What? Jack exclaims, turning to face the physicist. Henry doesn't bother getting up from the floor. With a sneer, he starts talking. The fine line between transportation and annihilation of particles. Too much or too little power could drop us in the middle of empty space. The smallest error could combine particles in a disorderly manner, completely fucking up the atoms so we have a goddamn bomb in our hands! Stop, stop! What are you talking about? Jack interrupts him finally. These are all the things that could go wrong if we don't test the portals before using them! Jack barks out a humorless laugh. <laughs> you have to be exaggerating, right? He turns to look at me, though. I can't speak for those specific details. I'm not a physicist. I tell him. But you can bet every other model we're copying did enough tests of their work. Maybe those results aren't the files we have. Then steal more fucking files! Jack yells at me and immediately swivels towards Henry, carefully avoiding Roger's face. I do not have the time to build a backup portal or waste any resources. You're going to make sure that everything works to perfection before we use the device. And when we do, everything will work according to plan. There are no other options. Understood? The captain walks away without waiting for an answer, which is fortunate, because then he misses little Jackie's voice when she says, He doesn't really understand how science works, does he? Days and weeks of hard work come and go. The portal is very nearly ready for use, but I should have known that peace in the Daedalus experiment couldn't be long-lasting. One night, I'm startled awake by a hand on my shoulder shaking me, and another hand on my mouth, keeping my screams muffled. Shh, calm down, it's me, Henry tells me. The dim light coming from the hallway outside the women's sleeping quarters is enough to let me see the edges of his crazed expression. I yank his hand off my face and sit up. I whisper to him, What the hell? Are you crazy? I need your help. He replies and nods his head towards the door, as if that's enough to get me to follow him. 
He might be a physics genius, but he doesn't understand people. Only when he looks back and sees that I'm not following him, does he return to my bed and whispers, I'm trying to do something so that Captain Thompson doesn't get us killed. Aren't you wanted by the government too? You're the only one I can trust. Come on! Begrudgingly, I know I have to follow him. We walk out of the dormitories, past the offices and the meeting room, and beyond the specialized workshops and laboratories. The portal is kept at the very end of the warehouse. It is almost ready, looming in the darkness in front of us. The quiet unnerves me, so I turn to Henry for further explanations. He can't stand still, so he begins turning on the computers around us as he talks. I've been thinking a lot about Tomlinson's reluctance to let us test this experiment, he tells me. I'll spare you the details of my theory, but I'm starting to believe he genuinely wants a bomb to blow up the moon or eradicate the U.S. from the planet Earth by shooting a ray from up here. Yes, you can look at me as if I'm mad. That's not news to me. But even if you choose to believe his plans, even if we do our jobs and he doesn't interfere, an untested portal like this can be lethal. We can go behind his back and test it ourselves. We'll stop his nefarious plans or just get ahead of his stupidity and ignorance. What do you say? I think about it for a second. I do not think that Jack could possibly turn this mostly well-made teleportation device into a bomb or a laser or any other insane idea Henry can come up with. But I would very much like if this worked as safely as it's meant to do. How can we test it, though? I ask Henry. They refuse to build your backup. That is where you come in, computer nerd, he replies. I thought maybe you could program it so that the thing that crosses the portal comes out through the same location instead of the coordinates that that little prodigy girl is working on. Is that safe? I wonder. But I receive only a shrug in response. This is where Jack would have lost his temper. But personally, I feel thrilled by this challenge. Without needing to know any more, I get to work. At first, I think that Henry's plan is going to be easy. It only takes a small change in the programming of the system. But then we turn on the portal. Lucky that either they're letting us get away with this, or that this advanced technology is quite silent. We start by trying to pass a chair through the portal, something we can push through without touching the shimmering energy ourselves. But as soon as the solid object brushes the active portal, this one frizzles up and dies. Again! Henry grumbles, and we get back to work. Next, we throw a paper plane through the portal. It passes through without inflicting any change on itself or the portal. Again! Henry repeats. He makes an adjustment to the portal. I fiddle with the code so the portal becomes a mirror of itself. Throwing a balled up napkin, it gets thrown back at us. Throwing a pen at the portal gets stuck in there until we completely turn off the machine. The clock is ticking. Soon enough, Jack is going to deem the machine ready, and we won't have any more nights to lose sleep, trying to preemptively save our lives. Luckily, one night, our secret meeting gets interrupted by an unlikely voice. You're overcomplicating things, Jackie says. We were startled by her presence, worried about getting caught. But if anything, she looks interested in our work. What do you mean? I ask her. We don't have another portal built on Planet Daedalus, do we? Jackie asks us with a timid smile. You don't need to make this exact same portal the landing spot. We can program it to coordinates just 10 feet in front of us. If you're just testing the machine, this is all you need. Jackie's idea is a game changer, for better and for worse. Technically speaking, it works. She provides us the coordinates, I change the code, and we make the first test that same night. Henry stands in front of the active portal. He picks up a spare screw left on the group and carefully throws it. I stand with Jackie on the other side, staring at the spot where the screw is meant to show up. Effectively, a new portal opens up. It spits out a sad little handful of dust and goes off again as if nothing happened. The three of us rush to the dismal spot of arrival. It's pure dust. It was titanium, for fuck's sake. I'm frozen in place, and I feel sick. I can't help but think that if we hadn't run these clandestine tests, Jack Thomason would have sent God knows how many people and resources through this death trap. Don't look so frightened, kid, Henry tells me, sweeping the dust with his worn-down boots. This portal has the power to send us across space. 
Maybe everything will turn out better if I turn down the intensity a few notches. We do. I join Henry making some adjustments to the system of the portal, and we try again. And again. And again. First, a paper plane again. It comes out the other side on fire, and it turns into ashes within a second. Next, we throw a pillow from Henry's bed. It doesn't even appear on the other side, and we lose the rest of that night freaking out over where it could possibly be. The next day, Captain Thomason finally announced that he and his superiors, whom we aren't privileged enough to know, have deemed the portal ready to start the move to Planet Daedalus. That means we only have one night left to make sure this won't be the death of us. It's an endless night. We're all filled with dread, and the pressure makes us feel sick. Not even Jackie can muster up her usual optimism. She's just a kid, and I really don't want to watch her cross the portal and turn into dust. Firstly, we throw one of Henry's sweaters through the portal. It comes out transformed into a homogenous mass, unrecognizable and absolutely gross, but we are undeterred by now. Jackie is learning my code, I'm learning physics, and Henry is working like a madman. His next attempt is ambitious. He throws his own cell phone through the portal. When it hits the ground, the screen cracks. But against all odds, the attempt is successful. The device is in one piece, and it even works. We celebrate as quietly as we can. We know what the next step is. Our own nerves made it nearly impossible to have dinner. And either way, we had planned to sneak out some of the food served for the workers of the Daedalus experiment. Beef, chicken, a handful of vegetables. If this organic matter can pass through the portal without too much trouble, we'll feel at least more safe. Personally, I feel surprised when I see the piece of roasted chicken land on the floor of the warehouse, looking completely and perfectly unchanged. That's great! We did it! Jackie cheers. I'm not so convinced, and I tell them, are we sure it's alright? We can't even run some tests on it? You know, something could be changed on a molecular level. I'm afraid we don't have the equipment for it right here and right now, Miss Chase. Henry replied. Whatever else he was going to add gets cut off by heavy boots and a hissing coming towards us. What the hell are you doing to my portal? Roger growls at us, but is thoughtful enough to whisper. Calm down, big guy. Don't tell me what to do! Roger snaps at him. Roger, you have to trust us, I say. You have five seconds to explain. He barks at me. I fear he's going to punch one or both of us, but a sweet voice comes and saves us. Roger, look! It's Jackie. She lifts off the sheet we used to hide the tragic remnants of our experiments. We were doing tests that Captain Thomason didn't approve of. I know it wasn't right, but if we hadn't done it, then tomorrow all of us would have ended up like this. Disgusting. Roger mumbles staring at the strange mass that was created out of particles of Henry's sweater, combined with stray hairs fallen on it, dirt clinging to the fabric and everything he'd kept in his pockets. What the hell is that? I warned you, Henry said. Does it work now at least? It does. We think it does, I say. But we can't be sure. We're as sure as we can't be, aren't we? Jackie's hopeful statement is sweet. I'm still unconvinced, but Henry is reckless now. You should try it, Roger. Unless it scares you. It doesn't scare me, fuck you! Roger yells. I curse our luck. I know he's exactly the type of guy that would let himself be baited that way. But I can see Henry's strategy. We do need human test subject. I'm not getting in there and letting you kill me! Come on, big guy. A piece of chicken survived it. You can't be more delicate than that, huh? For a moment, I think that this time Roger will really break Henry's nose with his fist. Instead, his big hand lands on Henry's shoulder and squeezes. Why don't you join me, old man? He asks. Deal. Henry replies with no hesitation whatsoever. Henry, no! I exclaim, trying to protest. But something about the glint in Henry's eyes tells me that if Roger hadn't shown up, he would have gone into that portal by himself tonight, either way. Get the systems ready, Miss Chase. We have no time to lose. I'm scared to my core that those will be Henry's last words, but Jackie assists me with the computer. 
The two men stand by the portal, and we activate it. Everything feels in slow motion to me. They step in at the same time. There's a flash of light, a shimmering sound, and the other portal opens up. In the blink of an eye, they're there. They successfully cross the room, using our portal made up of stolen data from a dozen other ones. They survived. Henry looks a little sick, but I convince myself that it's exactly how most people would react to even the most safe and reliable teleportation devices. Roger looks positively elated. Tomorrow, we go to Daedalus! He exclaims. The time finally comes. I swear that Jack looks at us strangely, and I stand by my suspicion that he let us get away with our covert tests, perhaps knowing we'd take care of it without worrying him too much. He's grinning proudly when we start the move of the sources, and the workers to set up the first American camp on planet Daedalus. Thank you, everyone involved in the Daedalus experiment. We've successfully completed this stage, and the best is yet to come. Let's go ahead with the first shipment. Soldiers, Team One, line up in front of the portal, please. You're meant to distribute, prepare the terrain, and make room for the upcoming shipments. Ready, Team One. Systems ready? And... Now! I think Jack feels a sick pleasure out of being the one to press the button that completes his mission. God knows how much money he's earning for this. He thinks he's made it. But Daedalus is too far away. We've no way to know if the team made it there safely. They should have. The portal is as good as we could make it in the time we had. Shipment 2, 3, 4, and 5 make it through the portal. Supplies, tents, tools, more soldiers. If this works, the US will take ownership of a whole new planet. Scientific team, it's our turn now. Jack announces. Complete terror pulls in my stomach as I stand in front of the portal. But where could I even escape to? I had no life before all of this. All I can do is hope I'll have one after. Jackie holds my hand as we wait, even if, for once, her parents are with us. Are you all right? I ask Henry, who stands beside me, looking pale and sick. I'm good as new. He grins. I know he's lying, but we can't get help without admitting to using the portal without permission. Besides, as far as I can tell, Roger does seem in perfectly good health. Jack speaks as all of us prepare to take the most dangerous steps of our lives. Completing the first stage of our mission with the Daedalus experiment in three, two, one. It's unlike anything else I've ever experienced, and I've tried teleportation before. What is usually a tingle and breathless feeling is now the feeling of a heart attack, of completely dying for a moment, ceasing to exist, burning away. And yet, it isn't quite painful. Stepping into Planet Daedalus is like waking up from a dream, coming out from underwater, at first, I'm blinded by the sights, the orange skies, the blue sand, the infinite horizon. But when my eyes adjust, I'm glaring at dozens of soldiers running around like agonizing ants. Half of them are struggling to keep together the equipment we transported over here. Ropes are melting away, metal is turning to dust. There are spontaneous fires in several places. It's complete chaos. Not a success, but a horrifying failure. The other half of soldiers are just trying to stay alive. They're vomiting. They're scratching their red and swollen skin. Their hair and teeth are falling. And I don't want to get close enough to see more details. Quickly, I turn to my side, to Henry and Roger. I find one entire human body turned to ash. And another that caught fire from head to toe. Under Roger's agonizing screams, I can barely hear Jack's yells. No! No, this can't be happening! We got the blueprints! We got it right from under their noses! It worked for them, it'll work for us! Stand back up! Come on! We've got this! He sounds insane. This is clearly a catastrophe. On my other side, Jackie is crying. 
Her mum is exhibiting the same reactions as some of the soldiers and her dad is trying to help her. But if I could guess, I'd say this is hopeless. My heart is racing as I make the calculations. Staying here means dying, that's for sure. A second journey through the portal killed Henry and Roger, but we're both younger. This also might be our only chance of surviving at all. I turn to the little girl, the prodigy, one of the brilliant minds responsible for this chaos. And I say, Jackie, listen to me. This could be even more dangerous, but are you ready to go back home? Hi, sci-fi horror fans. It's Kira Rhodes. Thank you to all the amazing VAs who took part in this project, and thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you to all of our official members of the channel. Your support means a lot to us. Craving another scary tale? Click on that video on your screen. Until next time, everyone. And remember, stay cosmic.